Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gazeta Della Five. Listen, it's myself, Rio Ferdinand. Steve couldn't make it today. It's not unprofessionalism, uh, personal matters, but he will be back with us next week. And of course, we've got Fabrizio Romano. It's a big week in terms of uh, transfers. But Fabrizio, I'll let you kick on with the scoop. I want to start, guys, and first of all, thank you again for, for the invitation. I want to start with an important player for Liverpool because we always mention Mo Salah contract because, of course, he's out of current in 2023 and he's in talks with Liverpool to extend the deal. But I'm told that Liverpool are also uh, ready to open talks with Sadio Mane because also Sadio Mane is out of contract in 2023. They know there is a dangerous situation because now all the public focus is on Mo Salah. And so they are prepared to open negotiation in 2022 also with Sadio Mane because they want also him to stay at the club. And so this is the first point I wanted to, to mention because I think it's going to be an interesting negotiation for Liverpool. They want to keep this player as they want for, for, Mo, for Mo Salah. And then I wanted to jump into Tottenham because it's not a break in news, but it's just a feeling, but it's an important feeling uh, about Harry Kane, because I'm sure that in a few weeks we will have the, the rumours again and the news again around Harry Kane and Man City. They're looking for a striker. So from Tottenham, they expect, again, the rumours around Man City and Harry Kane. But the position from Spurs, from what I'm told, is still the same of this summer. They want Harry Kane to stay, and they think that in January nothing is going to happen. So also Antonio Conte wants the player to stay. He's 100% convinced it will be a perfect player for him. So the plan of Tottenham in January, whatever is going to happen with, with Man City, is to keep Harry Kane at the club, and this is what they have in their mind. And then I wanted to, to end with interesting news about two players for Real Madrid that has been, that has been key players for many years and now will be available as free agents a lot, of, a lot of chances for this. And I'm mentioning Isco and Gareth Bale. They are both out of contract in 2022. But at the moment, from what I'm told, Real Madrid have no plans and hope and no talks with Gareth Bale and with Isco to extend their contracts. So it could be an interesting one for many clubs to sign Isco or Gareth Bale next summer if Bale decides to continue. And for Isco, is an interesting opportunity. Many clubs wanted him for many, many years and now he will be probably available as free agent. Who takes Gareth Bale, man? That's the question. Who takes Gareth Bale? Newcastle. Good question. <laughs> Ooh, good shout. Good shout. Newcastle. Yeah, that's the only team I can see in the Premier League who will be willing to, 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 to make a mad appointment like that. I know you know him personally, Rio, but I just think the career's been done a minute ago, man. Uh, right now, it's about playing for wages. Yeah, man. Like He did okay at Spurs, but the hunger, when you're a top player, and you'll be able to confirm this, your hunger can't be for parts of the season. It has to be every day, all the time, you know. How he's found himself in his contractual situation at Real Madrid, I don't know. But I, I just think the hunger is gone a while ago when it comes to him. Mm. I just think he's a, he's a massive talent, man. If you can get him on the cheap wages and you can take the wages down, you've got a chance to really get have an opportunity. It's a risk because he hasn't, he, he, like you say, he hasn't played loads and loads of football lately, but he didn't set the world like at, at Spurs, yeah, but he, he still scored okay. a few goals. Yeah, yeah, did okay. Like definitely a talent. I just think with the wages, that's his biggest problem in my opinion. Mm. I will keep an eye on MLS because I'm told that Los Angeles Galaxy had an interest last summer. Then it was not Ooh. nothing advanced, but they had an interest last summer. Last summer in in Gareth Bale. Let's see what he wants to do. Of course, because Ooh. as you mentioned, it's up to the player and what he wants to do for his future. But MLS could be one of the possibilities if he decides to, to leave Europe. Right, Fabrizio, I think now we've got you on, man. We've got to ask you about the the, the so-called scandal that might be spreading across football at the moment. Um, the transfer of Romero from Atalanta yes. to Tottenham and all the other things that are surrounding that. Can you explain for us? Yes, what's going on here in Italy, in particular with Juventus, but from what we're told, it's not just Juventus, so will be also other clubs into this story in the coming days is about what we call in Italy plus valenza. Uh, it means when you sell a player with a different value from th the same value, you, you sign this player and you sell this player for a value that is not exactly his market, real market value. And this is what is going on in, in Italy. Because what happens? With difficult financial situation, top clubs like Juventus were trying to find solutions on the market to save their balance and for the financial fair play. I want to give you an example so it's easier to understand uh, what they did with Barcelona more than one year ago with a swap deal, Pjanic, Artur. Pjanic was never playing for Barcelona. 
Arthur for Juventus has been a disaster, I want to be honest, because we were expecting a top midfielder, but he's never playing, and when he played, it was a disaster. So this deal was not for the top players, but the value on the balance for Milan and Pjanic was for around 65 million euro, and for Arthur was around 80 million euro. So we had a big, very big value for these two players, but in this, this, this swap deal between the two clubs we, was with no money. It was with just a small amount of money, around 10 million euros, because yeah. of the difference. And so what they're doing, this is the biggest example. But imagine that Juventus, or also other clubs, did the same with many players involved in negotiation, but with no money going, in the, going on in the, in the transfer. The, no real money. It was just about the value of the players. So mm. you are announcing the value of the players. Imagine with how many young players they can do it. You're announcing, I sell this player for 10 million. But in reality, you are not selling this player for 10 million. You are doing a swap deal with players that have the same value, but it's not the real value. And you are moving no money. You are just saving your balance and helping your financial for play side. This is what happened. And this is what they want to investigate to see what's going on. It's also about Napoli. They did the same for Ozyman deal, paying officially 75 million. But into this 75 million, there were three young players going to Lille with a value that was not real because we're around 30, 35 million. But these three players have disappeared into the academy of Lille and never playing. And so this is why they are investigating into the real value of these players and how they are changing the, the balance because what they're doing is changing the balance. So what, what would the prosecution be if found guilty for this? This is a good question because we have different rumors, nothing official yet on this point from, from, from Italian sources, but we have a lot of rumors here in Italy. Someone is speaking about uh, points to be reduced into the table for Juventus and these kind of things. But there are also other clubs, let me say, also other clubs under investigation, so it's not only Juventus. So my feeling is that at the end is not going to be something big uh, someone is saying juventus into the second division and this kind of thing is not true it's not going to happen also because it's not something that is influencing on the pitch when we had the scandal in italy a few years ago it was something influencing on the pitch with the referees this is about the balance so it's something different uh, but for sure it, it's interesting to see what is going to happen in the coming weeks because they want to be fast in this process mm -hmm. this is what they said they want to decide everything within one month or two months and so i think we'll have the final answer very soon you had Roma as well. Obviously, they're one of the clubs that are involved. But obviously, Tottenham, you know what I mean? They're the ones They're the ones that bought Romero. So is there anything that they will be investigated for? How? What's no. happening with them, etc.? No, no, no. It's not going to be... From what I'm told, is Tottenham are not going to be involved in this story uh, because it's about the transfer of Romero from Genoa to Juventus and then Juventus to Atalanta. So it's about Juventus and it's not about Tottenham. Also because I yeah. think that Romero is worth the money they paid. Okay, maybe it's not 50 million, but 40 or 35. So it's not a scandal Romero transfer to, to Tottenham. It's about what happened in the negotiation with Genoa. Juventus did many and many negotiations with Genoa in the last few years for players that many of them were never playing with not real value. And so this is why Romero is into this story. But it's not about the player and it's not about the transfer with Tottenham. So at the moment, Tottenham have no problem with this story. A lot of Newcastle fans we have on here <laughs> who watch and they're very interested to see this window. And the name that it keeps coming up is Dembele from Barcelona. Is there any truth in that? They have an interest. Uh, and when I say interest, it's true that they are calling people close to Dembele because this player is in a crazy situation on contract side. It's like two years that they're negotiating with Barcelona. They're offering him a new deal. Barcelona are always optimistic and they're still optimistic to have Dembele signing a new deal. But then at the end, he's not signing. Every single time they have meeting, they have contact and he's not signing. He wants a super big deal, a super big new contract. And this is why Newcastle are inquiring about him. I say inquiring because they have not made any official proposal yet because they have no director of football. And so mm -hmm. to, to go into this process, to do an official proposal, they will need something else. They have some intermediary working around the club that is speaking with people close to Dembélé. So it's true that they have an interest. There are also other clubs in the race. So Dembélé, if Dembélé will decide to be a free agent, Many clubs will be in the, in the race and not just Newcastle. But it's true they have an interest. He wants big money. If he's going to leave as free agent, he wants more than 15 million euro net per season as a salary. So it has to be a super huge salary. He doesn't even play, though. I don't understand. He doesn't even play. This is why it's crazy. Yes. Wow. And okay, again, cool. how, many, how many clubs do you reckon will be prepared to pay that, though, Fabrizio? You know, you can sign this boy as free agent. This is, the, this is the big advantage of the story. I agree with you that it's complicated because he's never playing. He had a lot of injuries, not nice stories outside the pitch, like he's always 
playing game, video games and never focusing on football. So we heard a lot of these stories from Spanish press in the last years. But at the same time, he's a big opportunity on the transfer market because as free agent, you have a big chance. He's a player that maybe in the future could change his situation. So, for example, I can tell you that Manchester United had an interest in him before signing Jadon Sancho in summer 2020 when they wanted Jadon Sancho uh, in every possible way, but it was impossible to find an agreement with Borussia Dortmund. They were trying for Dembélé. They offered a loan to Barcelona, and Barcelona said no because they were 100% mm. sure that then the player was not going to extend the contract when he was coming back to Barcelona on a loan deal for, to, to Man United. But they always had an interest. So I don't, I don't think that Man United will look for, for Dembélé. They, they don't need wingers right now. But many clubs would be, be interested. For example, Liverpool had an interest in two. In summer 2020, June, they made a proposal to Barcelona and they said no. So maybe Liverpool could be an opportunity, but not for this salary, I'm sure. You, you mentioned Man United there. Um, Ralph Rangnick has, just, Rangnick has just come in. Um, have you got information about maybe some staff that you might be adding to his team or anything like that? I'm told it will be at least one person. So a small number, but could be one member of his former staff to join Man United. Uh, it's going to be confirmed that Mike Phelan and the whole team, McKenna, the whole team will stay. The coaching staff will stay with the team this year, also Michael Carrick. So they will continue with the same staff and they will be allowed to bring a small number of members, but I'm told one. This is what is the plan for, for, for Man United. I'm also told that in the first meeting, uh, just to clarify what will be the role of Ralph, Ralph Ragnick, he won't be just an interim manager. And I think this is an important point to clarify because from people close to Ragnick, they told me when we had the first contact with Man United and they were offering the interim job, Ralph was not happy. So Ralph was prepared to say, Man United is a dream to me. Premier League is a dream. His biggest dream since day one is working in football. But I can't accept an interim job. So Ragnick was not happy with this possibility. He wants to plan for the future. Then when Man United were coming back with a proposal with these two years, consultancy role he decided to accept because it's something with vision it's something where he could be involved in the decision of the next manager but also i'm told with the contrast of key players expiring with decisions to make on players that maybe are not so young and so he can decide on these kind of things so he will have power he will have power together with the board but he will have power and this is why he decided to accept all the interim job he was not going to accept i'm hearing also that if, if he was to um do really well um the, the club wouldn't be totally against him going and going for the for the full job full time. Do you think that's something true? It's a true rumor, or that's something that he would accept as well? I'm hundred percent sure that he would accept because I'm told that Ralph Ragnick's mission would be since day one to try to do this to have a long term contract with Man United as a manager. So he will try, and this is his biggest mm. dream. So he knows that it's going to be complicated and difficult, but it's something he will try to do. So with results, mm. but also with a vision. So I'm sure that Ragnik would accept this kind of opportunity if he's in the right conditions. So always with a vision for the future of the club. Mm. But at the same point, from Man United, they told him and they've been very honest, saying, OK, we are looking for a new manager and we want you to help us to find the right one. So let's decide together who has to be the next manager. But then... We can't, we can't say what is going to happen. Maybe if Ralph Ragnick is going to win something with Man United or doing a great second part of the season, he will have chances. He would be prepared to do it. This is what I'm told. Mm. Uh, is it enough, though, one staff to come in or two? I mean, is, is that because they, they, they're viewing it with the fact that he might he's only the interim manager? I don't know your opinion. I'm told, from what I'm told, around the dressing room, players are, are not so happy with this stuff. I want to be honest. This is what I'm told. So, with the staff? Yes, with the current one. They are not, not super really. happy. They are not super happy. This is what I'm told from many different sources. So then, you know, maybe with results are helping and changing everything in football. So maybe you win two or three games and the feeling is completely different. Mm. But for example, the feeling I, I, I received, the feedback I received in the last, in the last week was, okay, all is gone, but we have the same faces at the training ground. We are doing the same things. So <laughs> now we have had something the different. <laughs> yes, we have the same people. It's just changing on Sunday when you go uh, on the pitch and people have no hole to attack. But at the same point, what we do during the during the week is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So this is why I think Ragnik will have to, to bring an impact also on the coaching staff. He needs mm -hmm. to bring his idea also to the current coaching staff to help to his idea pressing and everything to be ready for this Man United chapter. Wow. Um, across the road from Man United, you've got, obviously you've got Man City. And um, even though they're only one point behind the league leaders, Chelsea, in the Premier League, they still haven't sorted out their striker situation. 
Um, what are these rumours about Benzema being a potential target? I think no. To be honest, I think no. I'm told that Karim Benzema is super happy in Madrid. Then never say never because, guys, really, after last summer, anything can happen in football. Yeah. But from what I'm told, Benzema is super happy in, Paris, in, in, uh, in Madrid. He extended his contract with Real Madrid till 2023 because they told him, we want you to be part of this team, whatever happens with Kylian Mbappé. We want you to be with us next season. He was super happy about it. So I don't see Karim Benzema joining Man City next summer, to be honest. What about okay. Torres? The same for and Torres may be going to uh, Barcelona from Man City. Is that yes, true? Yes, this is, this is a strange story because it reminds me what happened with Sterling. We spoke about Sterling for two months from Spain. They were speaking like it was done deal for Sterling to Barca. And we always mm. say, guys, they need to pay. So this is the situation. Man City are open to sell their players, but they want money. And for Barcelona, it was impossible to approach Raheem Sterling because of this. For Ferran Torres, what I can say is that it's true that they had contacts from Barcelona side with the player and with player agents, that the player would be super happy to work for Barcelona, to be back in Spain, to work under Xavi. So it's true that there are contacts between Barcelona and Ferran Torres and the player would be open for this move. But for what I'm told from Man City side is same with Sterling. We want real money and he's an interesting <laughs> player. And real money means 60. Show me the million money. Scooter. Exactly, exactly. Or give me some player. Barcelona have many interesting players, but Barca are not going to sell any of their jewels of La Masia. And so I think it's not going to be an easy negotiation, but I'm sure that Barca will try because Xavi loves this player and Ferran Torres would love to play for Barcelona. Then he's Spanish, so also the feeling around the player is a bit different from Ryan Sterling, who is English, so, you know, it's, it's completely different. But at the same point, it's not going to be easy to negotiate with, with Man City. As, as things stand. And they need to sell players. Let's remind that Barcelona are not allowed to register any new signing if they're not selling players. So maybe Coutinho or maybe any other, but they need to sell. Coutinho, wow. That's mad. Rio, you want to ask uh, Fabrizio about the most important transfer that we're looking forward to? Not even transfer, <laughs> contract renegotiation of the season. Who? Who? Come on, man. Stop <laughs> it, man. You know. <laughs> Yeah, jo Joel said to me, he put it in the group earlier saying, oh, um, Lacazette's going to be, um, can we have him as one of the uh, people that we're talking about? I said, like, that's not that's not headline news, but Joel wants to know, he's Arsenal mad. Lacazette, is he staying to renegotiate or is he looking to go? The feeling I have is still the same, that he's looking to go. This is this is just my feeling, yeah? it's not my opinion, but talking with people around, I am told, I, I have the feeling that he's, go he's looking to, to go. But it's not just about Lacazette. I, I'm told that we want they want to see at the end of the season. This is what also Arteta said. So end of the season, we will meet and decide with the player. So this is the official version. But what I'm told at the same point is that Arsenal have the plan to sign an important striker. They want to sign an important striker. I don't know if it will be January or if it will be summer. You remember last time we mentioned about Dujan Vlaovic. They were trying, but the player is not mm. open to go. But they're looking for this kind of player. Last summer, they were trying for Lautaro Martinez. They had a serious interest in Otaro Martinez, but the player mm -hmm. was not open for Premier League move in general, and the same for Inter. They wanted to keep him. But they want this kind of striker, a young one, and a striker who could be the number nine for Arsenal for many years. And so I have the feeling that I don't know what is going to happen for Lacazette at the end of the season, because maybe they will decide together to go for a one-year extension. It could be a solution, but at the moment, I don't have this feeling. And I have the feeling that Arsenal are looking for a striker. I, as I said, in January, it's not going to be easy. Maybe it will be summer. But they're looking for this kind of player. They need that. They need to do the next step in this position, number nine. Mm. Wow! Well, yeah. Listen, yeah. That, that's some <laughs> good news right there. You know, Fabrizio coming with the real scoop for us. You know, uh, you know, we do appreciate having you on, and uh, we know that the January transfer market is going to be opening soon, and yes. uh, we're going to be doing something special for you guys watching. So make sure you stay tuned. Uh, new designs, new different topics. And of course, our guy Fabrizio is going to be in town. Rio, how are you feeling though? You good? Yeah, I'm, right. I'm actually, I'm laid up in bed at the moment, man. So I'm, uh, I've got a little bit of a, my back's hurting again a little bit. So I've oh, had to just man. chill out. Yeah, yeah. No worries, man. I hope you get better. And uh, Fabrizio oh. still living life in Italy, loving it, I'm sure. Always, always, always in Italy. <laughs> Make Listen, sure. Thank you very days. much, man. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you, guys. Always super pleasure. You guys too. Thank you, Rio. We'll catch up next week. Thank you. Bye, bye, bye.